switching things up a little bit and we are doing new material where we can look at a quiz feature. Let's do that. You can do one of two things. You can start with a blank quiz where it sets things up as a quiz for you or you can start blank. I'm going to go here. And the first thing I do is I go into my settings. And so now we're switching gears. So if we're thinking this is a quiz or not necessarily um, a graded activity but an accountability type of activity, what I would suggest is collect email addresses. Don't restrict to Wayne Highlands users. Um, we think we have the problem fixed where our kids live in the .me world, we live in the .com world, and we think they're connected, but Google um, had an issue with that, so we don't want to cause any trouble. So we can limit to one response. That's going to make them sign in anyway. Um, you can decide, if you're assigning something that you know is going to take a long time for them to complete, you can do edit after submit. So if they get working and they need more time and they need to hop away from it, it'll give them a web address that they can use to go in and complete the work. This see the summary charts and text responses, I avoid that. Under the presentation tab, you can show the, pro the progress bar. This is awesome, the shuffle question order, if they're in the room with you and they're sitting next to someone with a device, but not necessary now. And the confirmation message could be whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to make this a quiz, so I'm going to turn this on. We don't use the Chromebooks. We're an iPad school district, so we don't do anything with that. And you have to decide if you want them to get the grade right after they complete it or later after you review it. This is nice because on occasion I've made a mistake on a question, and I catch it before I, I return it. Not that any of you make mistakes, but I sure make plenty. You can make it so that they can see the missed questions, correct answers, and point values. Those are all your options. When you're done with your settings, hit Save. So the first thing I do, even though it collects their email address, is I ask them for their name. And it changes it to a short answer, makes it required. The reason I do this is in the responses you will see their email addresses. It's just nice to have a name there because then you can um, easily identify who's who and not guess who they are by their initials and their email address. So when I go through and I add my questions, since it's a quiz, um, we're going to make this um, non-academic. Um, Okay, what's interesting is it thinks I'm going to ask a multiple choice question, which if you're using a quiz you need to do, even true or false are multiple choice. So this is neat, suggested correct answer green, and it marks that. Um, if I go through here, I can add other answer choices. Again, it's a required question. It marks the correct answer. If it didn't give me a predicted correct answer, I would still say the answer key. I can decide how many points that's worth. I select the correct answer. Answer feedback is nice if you wanted to, because you're not right there with them, if you wanted to provide feedback on the question, you could. Remember, this is from when we read blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then I say done. So I go back through and I add additional questions. You can get really fancy, like you can have it take them to a different section based on an answer. I'll cover that in a different video. Um, you can add questions from other places. You can add titles and descriptions, you can add images, and you can add a video. So I know we're being careful with the amount of video we're putting in, but you really truly can add a video clip in. And the video can come from YouTube, or um, actually, yeah, just YouTube. And you actually could, let me see, yeah, no, we have to stick to YouTube for this. You could put the question in and ask questions. Another website that does that, and it allows you 20 freebies, I think, is Edpuzzle. It lets you put in a YouTube video. Edpuzzle.com lets you put the question in, stop the video, ask the question. They can't advance past it. Um, so that's another way to do this type of thing. So you go through, you create your quiz, 
by default it makes everything required. I'm going to title my form. And then when I'm done I can assign it in classroom. So let me do that so that you can see what this looks like. So under classwork you can create a quiz assignment. I just tend to go simple. Make an assignment. I'm going to add from Google Drive and I'm going to add that form. This is going to my whole class, just this particular class. This is where you can assign to multiple classes. This is where you would assign to all students or specific students. A great way to differentiate. Um, you can say ungraded since it's kind of doing the grading for you and this doesn't necessarily match the number of points. I think if I picked quiz um, assignment it would have done that for me. Due dates, topics, we're going to skip all of that so I'm going to assign this. Okay, so now I'm going to pop over to student land and see what this looks like. So here's the form. I can't type today. And I, I, yeah, okay. So yeah, that's a mistake. But I submit this. If I had said you, I would allow the student to see the results, there would be a button here to see the results. This takes me back to see the assignment. But this is tricky. It popped back to, to teacher view. Let me go here. Okay, so I'm in as the kid. There's my form. View the assignment. It's submitted by hitting the submit button. It's turned in. What I'm finding every once in a while is um, even though they hit submit here, there's a mark is done or a turn in here. I'm not sure why that's happening. But to see your results, the easiest way to do it is to go back to the original form and look at the results tab. And I have a video on that.